Do we have you, Bo? Yeah, I got a lot of noise in the background, so I'm muting right now. All right, it's great to have you. Um, we have Judge Naidu and, and Rocco's on. Someone um, needs to turn it off there. Yeah. Yeah, somebody's not muted. Okay. Okay, and, and tonight's topics are up to uh, Federal Judge Naidu. Uh, Judge Naidu, can you introduce yourself and tell our audience uh, what what you'd like to say? Okay, my name is Naveen Chandra Naidu. I was born in Singapore, been in the country for almost 30 years. I was an attorney who became a lawyer, and then I was elevated to the bench because of my work with uh, with yeah with uh, um, native indian tribes i've only concentrated in native indian tribes simply because they are the only ones who took care of our land as explained in the holy bible leviticus 25 23 that this land is not to be sold forever because we're aliens and strangers upon it so my appointment to the federal bench tribal court was solely through Native Americans. I didn't befriend any politician or I didn't befriend any governor because that's the definition of a federal judge. He's a lawyer who once knew a governor. So um, I've concentrated solely in land and property law because over the last uh, 10 years, We've had a slew of foreclosures, which are all very, very illegal, unconscionable, and unconstitutional. We'll go into that later. But uh, my claim uh, to my name, uh, and not fame, is that I've combined ecclesiastical courts with tribal federal courts, because then we are two sovereigns uh, overruling another sovereign, that is the state or federal courts. So this is, uh, I've had a lot of support uh, only this year. I've been at this for the last 10 years. Uh, I didn't have a tonto. I was just like the Lone Ranger. But now I have a lot of uh, rangers and tontos and people who are helping me. And it's been, uh, it's been a very interesting ride. So my particular focus is on restoring people back to their homes not by fighting the banksters and the lenders and the speculators and the investments, investors in state or federal courts, but in federal tribal courts, because the issue is to get a judgment and then have that judgment enforced by selling it overseas under the reciprocal enforcement of Foreign Judgments Act. Because locally, in America, even if you win a case, that's going to be appealable, and chances are big business, corporate America, and Wall Street will drown your judgment and overrule it, so you have no hope. So what I found is a willing bank, a major bank in Hong Kong, willing to buy our local judgments, and we sell it at 30 to 50 cents on the dollar, and you still have money in your pocket to go and buy yourself another home. Right. That's and, the way. Yeah. Right. And, and, and my concerns are that the United States Incorporated already does that with each other. They're, they're interstate commerce selling judgments to the highest bidder. And what these federal judges are, and everybody needs to be aware, is they are the bank. That's what bench means in French. And these trustees are over the bank. You know, the, the, a federal judge is a trustee. They, they're representatives to Congress. And my other concern with what you're doing is that you're coming in under tribal law. Tribal law is established through the contracts between uh, various tribes and, and, and Congress itself. Well, Congress is actually the criminal, and we don't adhere to any contracts between them. The treaty ability is to offset congressional bankruptcy, and that's what we're dealing with now is each and every treaty up and in including uh, the 1953 treaty with, the, um, uh, with Korea, which I'll get into that in a moment, 
Um, that treaty gave the territories over to Korea. So the casinos are all owned by Korea by treaty ability to offset the um, congressional congressional bankruptcy. So I don't. Yeah. Well. I well, uh, I think you misunderstood uh, what I was saying. I have nothing to do with Congress, I have nothing to do with the executive, and I have nothing to do with the courts. All I'm saying is, with a combination of tribal, that is federal, and ecclesiastical courts, our judgments are enforceable, because there's no point having a judgment which you cannot enforce. So I found a bank in Hong Kong that's willing to buy judgments from a tribal slash ecclesiastical court for 40 to 50 cents on the dollar. Absolutely. I am not saying, I am not saying I'm going to be dancing with the Congress and putting money into their pockets. No. No. The idea of going to a federal or state court in this country is like rearranging the deck chairs of the Titanic. Well, not really, because it's a, the the court system in the United States is based on ecclesiastical law, and what happened is Congress came in to interplead in every every aspect, and by doing so, they came in with congressional acts, including the treaties they have with the tribes. It's established these tribes. So you have to get rid of that treaty originally, because Congress never had any land by which to offer us territories or possessions by. They don't have well, any I, allodial title I, or right. I, I go back, no, no, allodial is inferior. I go back to the Magna Carta, the Mayflower Compact, the Declaration of Rights, and finally the Declaration of Independence, but then we also have the Royal Proclamation of 1763 and the Northwest Ordinance. Now... What I'm doing is, I am not just looking at Article 6, Section 2 of the Federal Constitution that makes, that makes the treaty part of the supreme law of the land. I'm going back to original title, which is not a lodium, it's usucapio. Usucapio is a Latin word which means ownership due to lengthened possession. A lodium is when someone declared, this is mine. You got the right to be wrong. Then no, comes no. land grants, then comes have... land patents, and ultimately land titles in three simple. So superior title is biblical law, Leviticus twenty five twenty three, followed by the fact that it was the native aboriginals of this country who are the proper stewards of the land until the Euro settler came here and introduced the concept of land titles which is interior, and uh, it can be subsumed if you look at the first principles of law. Absolutely, but the thing is, is that they don't have any title whatsoever, and that's what we've evidenced I know, in I know. the United See, States District case, Northern District of Indiana, uh, 313 yeah. CV052, and in that case, you will see that we came in and we asked them to prove up their title. Rather than us proving I am or anything else, I came in and I asked him, we, 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 in this whole case, we came in and asked him to show us the title or quit claim their claim on us. Well, apparently they couldn't come up with the title because they never had one originally. Ecclesiastical law is based on the concept that you, the church is allowing you the right to find the self. And in that context, you need to stand as God. You don't stand with another judge over you. You need to be That is judge. correct. That's yeah. what I'm doing with Leviticus 25, verse 23. Absolutely, but when we're coming under treaty ability or statute or anything else, what we're doing is we're consenting that Congress has any authority whatsoever. Congress started that out is why, in the that articles, is why, in the articles right. of Confederation. Congress started out on uh, October fifteenth, seventeen seventy-seven, and they created a corporation known as a style. They called this the United States of America. That is a chain of events. That is not a geographical state. However, the presumption in the mind of the sheeple allowed them to presume that apparently Congress owned something. Congress never owned anything. And, and again, with the uh, following treaties from the 1802 Indemnification Convention, 
any treaty after that was made and maintained to offset their bankruptcy, number one. Number two, that's what created the commission states under commission government. Number three, that allowed the United States Incorporated to be um, maintained by Congress, although all of this is nullified and void on its face because the original contract that Congress came up with that they signed with each other was void on its face. It's unlawful on its face. And so we need to go back to absolute ecclesiastical law, which means that everybody has free will. And what we evidenced this year in this case in Northern District in Indiana was that I was not allowed free will. We dissented and I went into court and the judge represented me. He acted as an attorney. Well, you should have never, you should have never walked into their courts and given them jurisdiction. Oh, not absolutely not. What happened was I came upon a motion and the the second part of that is that I already have an executor. I appeared before the executor as a special deposit in our executor documents. And what this is, is I, I went before my executor, the bank, as a special deposit. And we established the court and we established our title as the United States. And that's what Congress had been perverted originally. The United States includes every human being on this planet. They're United States of being. And from that point on, Congress came in and capitalized on the United States of America, creating the style, and then again with the United States Incorporated. So what we're, what we're dealing with is absolute contract law. And outside of ecclesiastical law, they're implementing the law merchant. So when they were terrorizing me this winter, I did not consent. I, did, I dissented to their jurisdiction and everything else. Well, they kept coming in and trying to allow me nicely to consent by ripping out my gas meter, pulling my gas from me, and the judge was doing this. This is how they implicate force. Well, you give them jurisdiction. You should have never given them jurisdiction. No, I never did. And and you have to look at my documentation. Um, I come upon a motion to for injunction against the sheriff because there was an unlawful eviction notice that was went out in the fiction. Now I don't claim the fiction. Um, none of us do, and and you you you'll have to go through the case. But right now we laid down the remand, and that's the most important thing. Is what people are not aware of is that everything under bankruptcy is whole, held in a holding corporation, as you know, corporate receivables. So you go into court and you are being put into this holding company as a franchise of the United States Incorporated. Now, when you dissent, you do the forgiveness doc, that obliterates the franchise that they created out of you at birth. That that thing, the, the uh, birth record is this um, manufacturer's statement of origin. It describes your height, weight, and the circumference of your head. The second part yeah, of that, that's, that's irrelevant. That's no, irrelevant. It's not. Anyway. It's not. The, it all stems from human trafficking. And what Congress is doing is they're allowing human <laughs> trafficking throughout time based on their law that they're implicating, as well as UCC, which, as you know, it, it comes from the Negotiable Instrument Acts, which stems from the law merchant. I no longer allow or consent to purchasing their laws. I'm not going to purchase my rights, and I'm not going to purchase my benefits because I hold a lodial title. I am the United States of being, and we have evidenced this title in U.S. District Court, and we came upon them and sued them as a foreign state. I'm a sovereign state because I only adhere to public law. A foreign state is delineated by the fact that they're they're arguing and they're perpetrating under commercial acts and acts of um, commercial acts and uh, uh, private acts, which are executive orders, as you know. Now that is the law merchant. The commerce clause allows that unless they're caught. Now they've been caught human trafficking, and so they're on. They're all under indictment. Um, Northern Holdings and Trust came in and gave us their financial disclosure this week, as well as the corporation cor a company, letting us know that, yes, they're the holding corporation, and, yes, they're in agreement that the United States incorporated the entire thing. Congress and attorneys that don't have a government 
should be held in the holding corporations. And this goes back not only under the rules of bankruptcy with corporate receivables, but also from the 1929 Geneva Convention, which says if you don't have a government, the corporations need to hold you prisoner of war until you find one. Now, we've evidence that we have a government. I'm my government. I have allegiance to my executor and my country is the United States and whoever joins with me. That is who I provide my patriotism to. I don't have patriotism to another father. And that, that is the foundation of ecclesiastical law. It's the question you have in your mind whether or not you are going to stand on your own or if you're going to allow somebody to represent you, which was the foundation. That That is the foundation of all ecclesiastical law. It gives I, you the choice. I, I, are, you, are you familiar with Public Law 97-2? Of the land. The Old Testament is actually their manifest. This well, establishes no, no. the removal well, me, from let, the self. Let me interject for a while. If you believe that the Bible is the word of God, which I believe, and if there's a federal law that validates that in conjunction with the free exercise clause, nobody who claims Christ as a risen Savior should be in a state court or a federal court, or a county court, or a municipal court. Right. That is why I established an ecclesiastical tribal court as the Supreme Court of the Washita Empire. Right. I don't want to see another motion, another brief, another good motion from satanic courts. And uh, the, the, you know, I, I'm done with them. I, even if they tell me to come to their courts, I wouldn't even bother with a special appearance notice. Absolutely. I have nothing to do with them. And I tell people, you keep on giving them jurisdiction, they will keep on terrorizing you. So if at all we need to talk, I don't want to talk about another Supreme Court case unless I have to. I don't want to see another brief. All I want to do and see is to make sure that we have motions and briefs coming through our tribal and ecclesiastical courts. Right, but that, you... And that alone is going to make the difference because even if they don't defend, even if they don't come to my court and defend, a default judgment from my court can be converted to a writ of restitution, and after that, we take the judgment overseas, sell the damn thing, game over. We don't play in their courts. But you are in 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 what what happened? Okay, let me let me start everybody out with the 1802 indemnification convention, and we'll start there. Now, at that point in time, under acts of enablement, the Congress came in. And they came in as a church. As you know, the church came in and it said, we would like to donate all of this land, 200,000 acres apiece, to each college. Well, when the sheeple agreed to that, they gave away their land, presuming that it was a church. That is not the original church. And so you allowed this. You donated your land over to each college. And this is the creation of each district. Okay, we're, we're, we need to go outside of, of your thought about the treaties because each treaty was entered into in order to offset always congressional debt. And so if you're coming in an under treaty, which is what the tribal definition is, that, that's what you're claiming is specialty because you're a tribe. But that tribe was created by congressional acts. So you need to go outside of that and come back in and indict Congress, first of all, because they this is, has been their function forever. And in the treaties that the Washita Indian are, are entered into, and, and you have to go back right to 1953 when Korea was given by Congress all of that debt. That's exactly what they've been doing already. And so in between each other, they, um, the um, Treaty of Amity, Commerce and Navigation, 1794, for example. So Congress owes the UK a whole bunch of money, and what happened, accept and use your mail, you accept mail in the dead name, you're posting your own bond. This is to offset their bankruptcy. They did the same thing in every treaty with the Indian nations. This is how they offset their bankruptcy. They enter into treaty to offset their bankrupt states. They 
happen as soon as the ink was dry on the constitutional contract. That constitution only went from Article 1 through Article 1, or Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, where no bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. Everything after that was of the United States, all lowercase. And, and this is why when you go back to ecclesiastical law, it's, it's found. Well, Jesus said this in 1 Corinthians 6. You are the judge. Why are you not judging your own matters? When you go to any judge to judge your matters, you are subscribing to that jurisdiction. You're also subscribing that he has the authority or she has the authority of ecclesiastical law is. Exactly. That's what I've done since 2001. I've started my own ecclesiastical court system in conjunction with the tribal people, not because I respect the treaties that, uh, that the tribes then in their compliance. Everybody knows that. But the fact of the matter is, as long as we can sell the judgment, put money in the pocket of the people, they will be able to go and purchase a home of their own. I believe in finding a solution. We can't find, we can't fight this Leviathan because the people are very happy with their 300 television stations and, uh, you know, their way of life. The, the only way you're going to... People in this country do nothing. All they do is talk, publish another book, attend another seminar, listen to another radio talk, but there's no action. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because Absolutely no action. Because it's of everything is broadcasting board of governors. So you have a whole bunch of sheeple that are being programmed by television. They're being programmed by the computer. Right. These are programs. And, and lied you, to. you have a whole bunch of sleepy sheep. It is our obligation, our obligation, because we're awake. Just even maintain this about the Levites. You know, we, th that Old Testament, the Old Testament, the reason that public law is in, is in failure is because the Old Testament of the Bible is their manifest. This is how you break the human being. Then you have Leviticus right after that. So you have the doctrine of Leviticus, which is to tax in exchange for protection. Now, when you have a predator that's offering you that protection, everybody's stuck under Stockholm Syndrome. You know, every we should talk about not just the who, what, when, where, why. I think we should talk about how we are going to extricate ourselves from this mess. And that's what my ministry and my uh, focus has been on this 11 years. They just like to talk about it and do nothing about it. They don't want to change the self go. So we need to focus on what we should do, what Absolutely. we should do and about changing the status quo. And, and that's what happened was I, I threw myself under the bus in front of this judge who's supposed to be my trustee. Okay, he represented my word and spoke in another way, which makes him an attorney. So he evidenced his title as an attorney. Okay, as soon as he, you can produce your title as a judge by operating as a judge. A judge can only view evidence and rule accordingly. A trier of fact is an attorney well. in a black dress created by UCC. Okay, it, it, bottom line is ecclesiastical law. You you have to have a judge creating the courthouse. You you there are no judges. These are well, administrative courts because you have a an, an attorney in, yeah. in a black dress well, up on the bench. That, that's why that's why I quit going there about 15 years ago, and I hate talking about them and about their court system and their stupid rules because in America the rule of law has been replaced by the law of rules. Every stupid thing is by the rules of court. You Absolutely. throw the law at them, they throw a rule at you. You know, so it's a waste of time. Legal process. And it's always been this way. We just didn't notice it until now because they upped the ante when we came into the re-seizure or recession. And yeah. since well, that time, this is well, a Well, I'll tell you this. If you look at Article 4, Section 3 uh, of, uh, of the... Uh, of the Constitution, uh, even if they have a law, that law can be overruled because Congress has the power to disperse us and make 
all needful rules and regulations. Well, that's under the doctrine of necessity, and that does not apply when you adhere only to public law. And I really do invite you to look at this Northern District uh, of Indiana, USDC, uh, 313 CV 052 because we've uh, down the line we've adhered to nothing but public law nothing but ecclesiastical law and so when yeah. the judges came in the judges came in and they tried to nullify our, our um, strike our evidence well that's in violation of should move, it. That's you should move it to an ecclesiastical court Absolutely, we convened it. And the way to do that is you have to evidence your title. You can't just say, I'm an ecclesiastical court. You have to evidence your title that you're operating as an ecclesiastical court. And that's what yeah, we did yeah. in U.S. District Court. And, and this last yeah. document that we laid down this week, what happened uh, is we called this court the United States Court. And we yeah. sent in the filing to the clerk. The clerk has filed that under United States Court. We have our court. Do, 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 we, do we have like a question and hour session here? Or are we just going to talk? Will Absolutely. somebody be asking when, questions? Whenever yeah. you'd like to start taking calls, that would be great. Yeah, I'm ready to answer some questions if people have specific questions because I'm a solution getter. And yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm sick and tired of uh, all these degrees and degrees that are acquired from the universities and colleges. So I'm more into the practical aspect of it. So if people have a question, let's answer some questions. Uh, we know what we know, but we want to know how we can help the people. I think that should be our focus. Absolutely. Well, we actually have been teaching um, this for a number of months because most uh, people listening do not understand the differences, as you well know, when they're going to court for their uh, foreclosures and things like that. They're stuck in a trap, and they don't know how right. to assert themselves. So, yeah, well, exactly. First of all, they shouldn't be going to a state yeah. or a federal court because these stupid state courts have got this non-judicial foreclosure madness. And that's because when people buy a property, they sign the sale and purchase agreement, which is also a deed of trust, which is also a security instrument and a confession of judgment. And so that's why somebody. they have... Yeah, so, so people should be aware of what they are signing. So we'll go ahead and take uh, any questions that people may have who are listening in. Yeah, we've got some callers on the line. Um before I take that, I'd like to point out also in these deeds of trust is a borrower's covenant, which is unlawful on its face. So you can nullify any mortgage, which is a dead pledge, by going in with an equitable estoppel and stopping this in its entirety. Because that borrower's covenant says the, the estate is lawfully seized. As you know, as a federal judge, the estate is a human body. And I cannot sell my body to anybody. I cannot Sell that well, and that, that contract be enforceable. Yeah, well, in a court of law, not a court of justice, that argument won't stand. So, um, it, it, it's, uh, you, you, I mean, I, I don't know your background, uh, lady, in, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your knowledge. and uh, uh, But what I'm saying is when people sign that stupid deed of trust, with all the hidden languages and all the fine print and all the boilerplate stuff, later on, when they stand up in a court of law, not a court of justice, that judge, usually an idiot, will turn around and say, well, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, Absolutely. I mean, you know, it's Absolutely. so stupid, that statement. It's infantile, you know. So let's go ahead and take some questions, if people have any questions, so we can help them. Uh, figure out what to sign, what not to mm. sign, right, if they're planning to buy properties. Absolutely, and and you never want to sign that borrower's covenant. You also never want to sign a bargain and sell deed, which we found recently, um, and, and I brought this up last week on the show, um, a, a female had gone on the, under her specialty and maintain a bargain and sell date, which which allowed the estates of her ex-husbands to be seized lawfully by these assholes, as well as she actually, in the bargain and sell date, it maintained how many times she'd been married and how many times she'd been divorced. So she's subscribing to be a whore under the coronation charter, which allows her disallows her because she's impure to have any access to her estate, as well as the fact that she brought her dad in as an attorney, in fact, 
marked him up with collar. So now she's she's not able to inherit in, in, in any realm because she's called him something else. He's no longer her father. He's her attorney, in fact. And so we need to really realize what these documents say, what they're used for, how your estate is being raised, how you are being stolen and human trafficked by QCIP number. And how you're maintained in these holding corporations to offset the congressional bankruptcy? Yeah, but the, but the sheeple, but the sheeple willingly, voluntarily, freely, wantonly enter into such contracts. No, so no, they I'll, have no idea of these languages. And so, what we're doing is we're holding them accountable. I don't want just their property back. I want the person or the entity responsible for this trick and deceit to be in the holding corporation. And that that's what it says under 46 U.S.C. 313.25. If you want to put a lien on a public vessel, that's great. You are going to assume the charge for that. You're volunteering. And so that's where we're at in the U.S. District Court. And it's gone through. Now, this is called the United States Court, folks. And this case is now being filed by the clerk. Everything comes down to the clerk on remand. You need to remit them as the source of money into the holding corporation. It's as simple as that. They had no claim against us. We came in with a notice of fraudulent assignment, and then we reassigned back to Article 1, Clause or, uh, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2, which is a general welfare clause. The United States is not to have any debt. It's not to have anything happen to it. It wasn't ever to be pledged, according to Article 12 of the Articles of Confederation. It was never to be charged, according to Article 12, of the Articles of Confederation. That is unlawful on its face. I don't have any debt. Human beings are not going to be human trafficked any longer. We have a question for the judge. Okay. Okay, the question is, um, to the judge, how do you create an ecclesiastical court? If you are a believer, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you are attending a church, or if you've got an ecclesia, a gathering of people, then all you do is you check into First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, get a group of people together, and invoke your Seventh Amendment rights, because a trial by jury, especially in an ecclesiastical court, can never be examined by any court of the land. And then you find a judgment, whether in favor of the litigant or against the litigant, and you record that decision and you inform the parties concerned as to the findings of the ecclesiastical court in conjunction with the uh, free exercise clause of the uh, Bill of Rights, First Amendment, and Public Law 97-280, which declared the Bible as a word of God. That's it. And the next step is, the reason I went into ecclesiastical tribalists, I can have the U.S. attorney, the FBI, or the U.S. marshals stop an eviction, because my judgments are coming out of a, a tribal, which is federal, and an ecclesiastical court, in conformity with the federal constitution, the supreme law of the land, which all these dumb idiots swore to uphold. So right. I hope that helped. Right. Okay. Now, under any federal statute, any federal anything was con created by the Articles of Confederation. That created the federal state. The federal state is Congress. The federal state is Congress. When you come under Article 7 asking for your rights, you are invoking the doctrine of election. The doctrine of election maintains that you can no. have a right or a benefit, no. but you no, 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 have both. No, 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 I disagree, because the Bill of Rights, the Seventh Amendment, is in the Bill of Rights. It's not one of the articles. The Bill of Rights was... was the contract very, between, between the people no, and Congress... No, no, the Bill of Rights is not really a contract because from a covenant. A covenant is something you don't break. A covenant a contract, is a promise. And as you know, based on the Bible, we're not to make covenants with Congress or the federal state. 
No, 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 no. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is the Bill of Rights is in place because the whole idea of the Republic was to have a limited government. We started with seven articles and ten amendments. Yes, yeah, so all there are articles of agreement according to contract no, law. No, it, it it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter well, that's is a contract. You you have to. No, we adhere to the truth here, no, Mr. Naidu. No, you got to look at all we do is speak the truth. Yeah. We teach our no, students. No, you, we don't. You, you, you got to look at. You got to look at Romans thirteen verses one to seven. Okay, it's that is okay. their manifest. Romans is yeah. still in the Old Testament, which is their manifest. This is what they go on to provide. No, Romans is New Testament. Testament. Romans 13 verses 1 to 7. Romans is New Testament. Anyway, there's no argument about Old Testament, New Testament, because the Old Testament is a New Testament uh, concealed, and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. No, the so Old it, Testament it, is their manifest, and, and you can see this when Jesus goes off on them in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 6. He's saying you can only fornicate if you give your body over to the Lord God, and you're about to rise up and bring yourself forward. You delegated the, your authority. And all these years, people have asked everybody to represent them. That is a delegation of authority. You need to take up your authority and take it back. You can only fornicate with the Lord God by giving it your body, which maintains under the law, you're giving it the estate. Now, doctrine of election prevents you from obtaining both a right and a benefit at the same time. It prevents you. It only offers you those two choices. That is not free will. The foundation of ecclesiastical law is free will. The foundation of ecclesiastical law is free will. So when you have a law merchant implicating the force and compulsion, which is a statute, statutes are statements of compulsion, they're forcing you into contract with them by offering you only two choices. That is not free will. Free will says that you have an unlimited amount of choices. You don't subscribe to another. You're not under the authority of another entity. And, and this is what you, you, you are, are providing in, in your concept right now is that you're still under the authority of a federal state. Now, the federal state is void. They are the criminals. This contract, the Articles of Confederation, pledged you, the United States, and charged you, the United States, to offset its bankruptcy. The Bill of Rights is a contract. Those are articles of agreement under contract law, just like any other of their treaties. Those are articles of agreement. Those are contracts. All right. Are there any other questions? Um, it looks like we've got a couple callers on, but they're not speaking. Um, I have a question. Um, there's a question from the room. Um, do you have any, can you tell us about some of your successes? We started, I started going to Hong Kong only about three months ago because I thought very hard and prayed very long about this whole thing. We're never going to find any success in local courts, state or federal, the only way to do this is to get a judgment and take it to Hong Kong. And uh, I just got back after a two-month stay in Hong Kong where I talked to a central bank of a sovereign country, and they have agreed to monetize our judgments. So my success story hasn't begun yet because... I only got confirmation about the purchase of our judgments about two months ago. We have about $650 million worth of judgments that we have sent to Hong Kong, and they're going to do it in tranches of $1 billion each. We've got a lot of people who are signing up for lawsuits that I'm filing in my court, that people are filing in my court against all the major banks, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Ginny Mae, and all these big, big, so-called too big to fail people. So success story is coming up. We have had no success so far because we just started less than two months ago. Without a bank to buy our judgments, I was, I told myself I'm wasting my time. Well, all of the so, banks are bankrupt since 1933, and they're held well, in, in corporate holding companies under corporate receivables. And that goes back to the United States District Court in northern Indiana uh, 
313 CVO 52. And what's happened is we put them into the holding corporations. Those belong to the United States. Okay. We have a little bit of background noise. What's going on? Everybody clear? Yep. Yep. Yeah, it looks like we're good to go. Somebody didn't have okay. their mute on. Okay. So what's going on is you need to put them in the holding corporation because they're under bankruptcy and they haven't followed the rules of bankruptcy stemming from Westminster statute coming from ecclesiastical law. Yeah, but the bank that I'm dealing with is backed by gold and I'm not dealing with any American bank. My holding corporations are all backed by gold as well. They're backed by the actual... United States Incorporated, including uh, Northern Trust, all of these other entities that they hold, and and the the um, law states that the bankrupt individual has to be in the holding corporation, not the human being, because that's that would be considered human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we have now? More people? Any any questions? Anything? Well, I think it's 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 just amazing. Um, let me grab the number up real quick. Pat, do you want to field some stuff? I have the number for okay. Colin. Yep. It's, <coughs> excuse me. 347-688-2902. And call in if you want to join us. Judge. Yeah. If you want to join us, call in and, and get on with us. Um, Again, the number is 347-688-2902. O two. Hope that was clearer. Sorry about Very that. Very <laughs> So what we're doing is we're obliterating every contract that Congress has entered into unlawfully since October uh, 15, 1777. And that has to occur before you can have a court. You have to evidence a court. <coughs> And the, the way to do that is to be the judge. You know, in, in my process, we're teaching the admission statement since 1938. Um, there's no evidence on the court record establishing a judge being in the court. Uh, what you're doing is you're establishing a convention center of just you and attorneys. And it looks like we've got another caller. Uh, 313, you're on. Do you have a question for the judge? Uh, sorry, 310, do you have a question for the judge? Area code 310? No, a, a, lot of, a lot of listeners will just join us over the phone lines and, and listen. There's a question from the chat room. Mm -hmm. Can the judge expand on the selling of judgment? Yes. What we have done is uh, a judgment is, for all intents and purposes, a security or a negotiable instrument. And it's got value. The reason this bank in Hong Kong is willing to buy our judgment says they're going to make a deal or make a steal with these local banks that we are suing for participating in illegal foreclosure. And the reason that bank is willing to buy this judgment is uh, all these banksters are FDIC, uh, you know, regulated and supported and insured. And those that are not, the bank in Hong Kong will contact Lloyds of London. So basically, uh, I literally had to clear the way and create a path for them to understand how they could collect because they have the clout and the people don't. So if we consolidate, Ghana, collect, collate all these judgments in one pool, and take him to them through my uh, court system, which is recognized, they will issue their local QC numbers or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just a technicality. The important thing is to put money into the pockets of these people who have lost their homes so that they can go and buy something without signing a stupid mortgage paper. Right, and they were they, their homes originally. You know, that, that's what gets me. When you go and you, you take out a loan for a home from a bank, the bank never held it. You're allowing them to sell you something that was yours originally. They never had any allodial title to uh, it. 
Yeah, yeah, they they plan, they they plan on putting it into a remic and then securitizing it. Uh, they they take advantage of Internal Revenue Code nine six zero AA to GG, and that's a tax free haven for ninety days. Absolutely. So the Buffets, so the Buffets and JP Morgans of this of this of the system do that every day for the rest of their life. So there is no way they are losing. Absolutely. They're using our things. They are using our deeds of trust as security instruments. And it's sick, sick, sick. Absolutely. And the QCIP number, you say the QCIP number is backed by debenture. And that guarantees the small government loan service that gives these loans out to these local municipalities, counties, whatever, gets their payment yeah. back because it's backed by your human value or your production. And um, yeah. From that side, when you when you're talking about the IRS, and, and earlier you had maintained that the, the the bank in Hong Kong was was covered by the uh, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Now that is an affiliate and contracted with. No, no, Congress. I didn't say that. This is contracted that, in I, with Congress. No, no, I said the bank in Hong Kong will contact the debtor bank, the the defendant bank here. And they will make a deal or do a steal because the local banks are FDIC. Right. So the bank in Hong Kong knows how to collect money from these guys. We don't have to get bo we don't have to get bogged down with all those technicalities. Right. As it's long as allowing, people are, it's still allowing human trafficking because the FDIC corporate, uh, the Federal Deposit. Do you do, do, do you have a do you have a better choice? Do you have Absolutely. a better way to put money into people's pocket? Absolutely, and we've got that going in this court case I keep mentioning uh, because we don't allow... Yeah, but I, don't, I, 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 I would rather eat rat poison than walk into their court system, ma'am. I won't do it. Absolutely. I'm not going to give them, I'm not going to give them the benefit of my intelligence or my knowledge, Absolutely. and I'm not going to give them the benefits of bowing to them and calling them your honor or judge. Absolutely. Because, I don't do that either. Absolutely. Yeah, we give I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And that's what most people don't uh, realize is that they're giving the judge your honor. When you speak yeah. that term, you're giving Well, I honor. can say this. I can say this. I think I'm the only one in the United States who has come up with this remedy without, without participating in this satanic process. Right, but it's still about human trafficking based on the 1978 Inspector General. What human trafficking are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean by human trafficking. Every time a QCIP number is established for these cases, the QCIP number actually is backed by debenture, your earning capacity, which means the human being is actually the QCIP number. That's only a representation of the human being. Well, it doesn't matter what name you want to give it. All I'm saying is... I got somebody who's willing to buy the judgment, and I got somebody who's willing to put money into the pocket of the poor man or woman who lost their house to an illegal foreclosure. Right. And, so and whether there is a fusive number or a pukish number, it don't matter to me. It's just another name. It, does it doesn't really matter because, because nobody is compromising their integrity. It matters you're a little too to close to your microphone. <laughs> it, it matters to me because it's still allowing human trafficking. If if a debt is secured by human production, that is human trafficking. And in our case, we're obliterating the ability to human traffic by putting them in the right placement. All right, right man. We'll go, we'll go with your argument. Good luck. I hope you can put money into people's pockets. And, uh, but we're not interested in only the money. We want to stop the human trafficking. Yeah. Well, if you want to yeah, stop the freedom. system, you want to stop the system. You got to get the people to stop sleeping. Absolutely. We're Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now I've got a meeting in five minutes. I got to go. Oh, be And you know how to reach me. So give me a call. Have a good day. Thank you. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Be well. Rocco, are you still with us? No, Pat, you're still there, right? I'm here, yeah. <laughs> now, Wow, so I guess it doesn't matter how the money comes, really. <laughs> right, right. You, there's, there's a whole bunch We don't of give a shit about whether it's human trafficking or not. We just want to put some money in our pockets. Right, right. And that's the consumer mentality. And, and the reason... Whether your kids are tied to it or not, you die, your kids are still wrung in, doesn't matter. Right. You got some money. Right, and, and what has to be done...
Oh, we're going into commercial. We'll see you at the end of the break. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. All right. Welcome back, everybody. This is Bo of the Bo and Rocco Show, uh, bringing it back in exactly. here. Just um, what an invigorating, if not controversial, <laughs> show today. Um, I guess maybe we should probably reiterate uh, the uh, disclaimer. Uh, uh, you know, Revolution Radio is not uh, responsible for the views of its or opinions of the host and the guests. Um, and aside from that, most everybody out there has my fee schedule. So I know the federal judges do. Hey, Rock, are you on? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm en route. I'm uh, uh, traveling down the road. So I had some uh, connection issues earlier. I'm back. Yeah, what did you think about this? Oh, it was, it was awesome. I, I, I'm assuming that, uh, that he jumped off the line. Yeah. Or no. Yeah, I, I figured, right, because, yeah, he was getting uh, hammered with some things. You know, well, hypocrisy, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, I realized that, you know, a lot of Skype messages were coming through and, you know, please let the judge speak and, and all that, but I think it was important to point out some of the false presumptions that he's operating under. Yep. Right. I think. Oh, there absolutely. Was a really good, there was a really good, I think, comparison. What do you think? Well, it sounded to me um, when he was talking that basically he didn't believe that the people would stand up. So why bother going for the root of the problem? Let's just settle for something second best within the system, go through the tribal route, even though the treaties are the same basic uh, premise. They're, they're still being used to discharge the congressional debt, calling it ours, and then go sell these judgments to China and Lloyd's of London. What, what, what's different from what the system does. Right, it's business as usual, business as usual. So. With a nice hat on it. Right, right. A robe. Well, the ecclesiastical hat, you know. Oh, yeah. Because you have to be a believer, of course, and then start your church. That was his premise on starting his ecclesiastical believer, and then gather your church together, and then something about or tribal. I mean, it's on it's on recording if anybody didn't catch that. But it's much understanding. Well what gets How me you, doing it? you know, when he's when he, he referred to the people not standing up, um I've been in this this fight long enough to know that while you know, even when I was in statue land we're standing up, but Due to the nature of the court and people not understanding the nature of the court, what has how the ecclesiastical court has been usurped, they're, they're getting nowhere. They're going around in circles because they're just. Yeah, that's for sure. He didn't even mention the uh, name of the bank, which would, I don't know, maybe that's because it's uh, a secret or something or <laughs> part of a non disclosure agreement or. Too, because as I found, they all are tied into the system one way or another, private or otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, it was all under the Bretton Woods agreements. You know, uh, the map was created out of the Bretton Woods agreements, and all of these banks are the same. They have judges at the helm, and these are federal judges at the helm. The Articles of Confederation we talk about all the time. However, you know, it's not often that we global governance and FDIC insurance people is insuring you the deposit in these banks, first of all. And this comes under the 1978 Inspector General's Act and um, every, everything that he was maintaining is a creation of Congress. And the, the only way to get out of it is to indict Congress, which is what we've done in this court case um, in uh, Indiana. And um, as of this, 
documentation, and we have renamed the court, the United States court. And when a clerk files in the United States court or any court, she's acknowledging that that court exists. And everybody needs to get to the corporation holding corporations. And this is under the bankruptcy statute stemming from ecclesiastical that's handed down through Westminster. Well, then it catches UCC and the bankruptcy code. But prior to that, they're the ones hold, held in corporate receivables. And we've held them to the line on this one because otherwise they are human trafficking. They cannot hold in a corporation, in any kind of holding corporation, human beings backed by the use of Coming under tribal law, or as a citizen, or as a resident of Congress, or anything else, or any other country under Congress, just nullifies your rights. You're, you're subscribing that Congress is your authority. I, you know, I, I thought he was actually on the right track, and it's obvious that he, he comprehended what you were saying, and he went with it. But then when it came to screwing up whatever he was doing, uh, deal out. So, you know, when you're invested in something and you see that as the uh, answer because you've given up or believe that your God isn't big enough to go after the root of the evil, it's kind of hard to let go of. Right, which is a it's a marketing ability to market something or, or the law merchant ability to market something for, to the sheeple that have been indoctrinated to live in a consumptive society. And if you want to purchase a right, you can run off to, to any one of these folks and purchase rights and purchase your benefits. However, if you realize you, you are the authority, you don't have to purchase your rights. That's the doctrine of election you the benefit or right you're you're only electing one you don't get both and you never get your inheritance and if you accept a benefit you're you, it's known as beneficium the second part of that your inheritance because you're asking a trustee to be over you to be your authority and ecclesiastical law frowns on this because of ecclesiastical law as, as everybody knows is the foundation of all of law all of law, state ever, ever. And if a judge is bound by church canon, this does not happen. We are not preyed on. We are not preyed on. If a judge is adhering to judicial canon, he has to be a judge outside, uh, handed out by ecclesiastical law. That's where they become a trier of fact created by UCC. A fact can be an allegation repeated more often than once. A trier of fact is breaking up before it and that means that he's an attorney about um Lindbergh and the statement to congress absolutely and and earlier when he mentioned jp morgan as a bank i was i was going to go into that uh charles Lindbergh in 1917 was referencing them as if they were outside of themselves and so when he went in there he was addressing congress and he was saying well Everybody's all these people. J.P. Morgan firm. This is treasonous to the United States. Well, Lindbergh's son was murdered. They just offered his son to silence him. And it wasn't very long after that. I don't think he lived a full life after that either. But the um, thing is, is that J.P. Morgan started out as an attorney firm. That it's so hard to realize. The Articles of Confederation, if you read them, it says it's a contract in between Congress and the original 13 colonies. You cannot make a contract with the state. This is like me going to the next So I buy their house, and then I pay myself. And then um, just the pleasure of having me as a landlord, and I start charging them taxes. This is what Congress did. Now, they did it again in 1802 when they raised need to be some kind of church offering to donate your land over to these colleges. This is what the 1802 indemnification convention was. They indemnified you, took your land, and then they started tricking you out by court process. Lindbergh was maintaining in 1917, he was telling Congress 
hello, you, these are criminals. These banks are criminals. They weren't banks before that. They were just attorney firms. When you get a, a letter in the mail that says a bank is suing you, a bank did not direct all attorneys. There is no way in hell that a bank can serve you. Um, a bank is not a living being, although it's been identified as a person, according to the 14th Amendment that Lincoln drew up. Um, but we've got to get out of this color. We, we all all this crap. Those original 13 colony, colony means farm, and you cannot make a contract with a farm. That's that's just impossible. And it was just, it started out as a shakedown. It continues to be a shakedown. The federal state are the judges, they are the attorneys, they are everything. And they're run by the Board of Governors. And the overall um, number one beneficiary of all of this is the Broadcasting Board of Governors. This is what maintains the system. Under and who's the Secretary of State for the United States Incorporated now. John Kerry didn't lose anything. Absolutely not. He just replaced Hillary on the Board of Gov Broadcasting Board of Governors. Now, the Board of Governors is the stuff that's ruining and, and ruling all of this. It's, a, it's all in hegemony. Under the bo uh, Broadcasting Board of Governors is the insurance, of course. Everybody knows. starts in insurance. Under the insurance is the court and legal system. And so you have to go out and about, uh, above all of that in order to get any kind of cure. Not remedy, you want a cure. You want to tell the Board of Broadcasting, uh, the Board of Governors of Broadcasting, you want to tell them, hey, look, we're going to do something else. You're not going to human traffic either. You're going to have to come over to our side and start, stop, first of all, uh, presenting programming to the sheeple. Because, as you know, last year Congress came in with H.R. 5702, 57 I mean, 5736. And what they did was they made propaganda or lawful again or legal again. Now, yep. why do they need to do that unless they're scared? You know, this is the same propaganda as in Nazi Germany. When Nazi Germany occurred, Bayer Corporation came in to indemnify Poland. Bayer Corporation as the Republic of Germany. It used to be a republic just like here. Uh, Hitler introduced acts of enablement that allowed the nationalized state. This is what you're seeing in the national debt versus federal debt. This is just Congress all over again making debt and, and holding you responsible for it. But under Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 and 2, you are the United States, number one. Number two, you have no debt. Number three, you are supposed to be on general welfare, not social welfare, not any of this crap, beneficiary crap that they offer you. You are to be on general welfare. That was the contract. The corporate the, are the raising is all about putting us on to the government tit, to the federal tit, so that we have no like less and less choice but to obey. Absolutely. And the saddest part is that they took all of your stuff told you it was theirs, and now they're renting it to you. This is Malthusian theory. Malthus has the nature of rent. He came up with the nature of rent, and he said this is what's going on. If you go back into Blackstone's commentaries, it's the same thing. This is how to establish this social structure. This is how to establish the courts over this social structure. When you go all the way back to the dictionaries of commerce and navigation, it says it all right there, what a bank is, what a judge is, what everything is. And bottom line, you're just being duped. Congress came in and stole all your stuff and is now renting it back to you at cost. And, and you, 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 most people can't even imagine beyond a benefit, which is what this, you know, applying this media uh, theory into a consumptive society. Yes, they, they want a quick fix. They want, you know, whatever they want right now, their house or whatever else. But the, the other side to that is that you might get your house back, but they're going to raise you through the medical industry, psychological industry, or criminalization industry. And so you're, you're always constantly within their grasp. You can get a, a small strip in, but you're not getting your inheritance. You are the heir. This is People get all excited when they get an extra, oh, he's going to give us an extra 800 back, some you know, economy stimulator so grateful for any you know little crumb absolutely and it, it, it's absolutely disgusting because so many people are hurting they're going after the crumbs because they're starving yep they're forced out of their homes into homelessness they can't pay their utility bills you're not supposed to be paying utility bills 
This was supposed to be paid for by the corporations, and Congress came in to maintain the corporations on corporate welfare. That is what the first and second welfare theorem is. That does not apply to you. It only uses you as the product. It maintains the corporations on welfare. Uh, Facebook this last year, how much, how much of a tax break did they get? $247 billion in tax breaks? Come on, oh. this is corporate welfare. You're paying for that. Yep. They get yep. the breaks. You, it goes on your back through the QCIP number. You're always in perpetual servitude. You Utility have companies too. Those are owned. Those are owned by um, Northern Holdings and Trust. Absolutely, because they're in bankruptcy. However, what the QCIP number does is it attaches you to each and every stock in those corporations. You are the franchise of the United States Incorporated, so you're attached to those stocks. You're the one that's maintaining the hedge on those bets. So every year, they, in June, they project your productive value. They get their monies. They get their loans, everything else. And you're the thing that's backing these stock options. You are the stock option. The birth certificate allows you to be the stock option. And I was so saddened to hear him just shut me down when I was trying to, t to speak about the manufacturing yep. um, statement of origin because, you know, he's like, well, that doesn't matter. Oh, that yes, doesn't matter, does. right? These are my babies you're holding in perpetual servitude by placing debt around their neck. Well, let, don't let talk about that. He's trying to sell it to China. Oh, it's, it's horrifying. The, the United States Incorporated right now, the reason he's going to Hong Kong is there's trade agreements only with China. India and Korea. That's who they trade to. Mm, mm, mm. But these trade agreements, everybody has to realize that before this case and before we, we've done what we've done, the United States of America or this geographical location, all the people here, we were supposed to be going into the third world status. Everybody is extrapolated. So this judge comes along, and he'd like to sell these judgments to, to Hong Kong or whatever else. That's based on their trade agreements. How is so that much for, So much for him being outside the uh, system as a sovereign. And how is that going to benefit the human being? Now, he just said, he spoke. Now, the other day when I spoke to him during that initial interview, he told me that it was 50 cents on the dollar. Now, tonight he's saying 30 cents on the dollar. <laughs> yeah, it gets smaller. And this is already on uh, Federal Reserve notes that are slave papers. Absolutely. Really. And you're the person or you're the entity that's going to get the 30 cents on the dollar, although you're the one that's been ha human trafficked all this time. You're the one that lost your house. I'm sure that it's not uh, a service he provides out of the you know, be beneficiary heart or uh, free well, will, of course. Well, it, it could be the federal status that he has he's a federal judge he's entered mm. in a contract with congress it doesn't matter if he was appointed or if, if they just gave it to him okay if they if they offered to give me a federal judgeship i would say no thank you i'm not i'm not anything affiliated with congress and and on top of that you know the international uh bar card that he carries i was assuming that he had knowledge of treaty ability which i have a feeling that he does but i'm not going to call him out until i talk to him you know I'd like to find out where he's standing. Why, you know, he can't be this stupid. Well, I was going to say about the, you know, idea of selling us a, a rights bag at cost. No, that's with interest. Absolutely. And and as you know, you know, you talked about um, tax breaks and crap. E everything that's coming out of this system, they hide it into these trusts. Northern Holdings and Trusts is a trust. There's no income on that crap. It's a trust. There's no income. And so they're not paying taxes on that either. Then you go out to the uh, uh, interest on attorney trust accounts, IOLTA trust. They're not paying taxes either. Congress sure as hell doesn't pay taxes. But Congress is the United States Incorporated. Congress is these attorneys. 80% of Congress is attorneys. Now you tell me why we're paying corporate welfare to keep the corporations on welfare and why we're not holding them accountable. You want to strip and... But they're the ones with your inheritance. Well, I'd go as far as to say as Congress is 100 percent attorneys, because whether or not those congressmen themselves are attorneys, their staff is made up of attorneys, like three or four attorneys. Each one of these Congress critters has working for them, and they are the ones directing. Absolutely. The Board of Governors. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a corporation. It's a corporate schematic. You have a CEO that's a Board of Governors. 
if, if you want to research these things, Google it. Board of Governors. County Commission is a Board of Governors. They're just in a commission state. They're allowed. They're given funding to do whatever they're doing. They're still the general counsel. They're still the corporate counsel. This corporate schematic goes from top to bottom, and it's always the same. It's still the corporation. You've always got the board of governors here. You've always got – that's a CEO. That's a CEO. You know, we, we need to just focus on holding them accountable, and that's what we've been doing in this Northern District of Indiana case because I, I, I can't imagine – not following through and allowing human trafficking in any way. And I can't imagine any human being willing to say, well, okay, it's human trafficking, but I can get you the money. I don't care about the money. I, I don't care about the money. I want the babies all out of this system. They are kidnapping our babies based on all of this congressional bullshit to offset their debt. By that's treating. why they're sold into you know the system and taken from families while certain, you know, incidents or whatever are being uh, brought up by psychiatrists and uh, false claims, you know, all of this, I mean, it's all tied together, but, you know, what's going to happen if we don't stand up and do something? And this judge seemed to be completely hopeless and futile about the possibility that people would wake up and see this and say enough. It's not enough for me to get something out of uh, a foreclosure and just, uh, you know, be sucked into the system through any of the variants. Um, I mean, it's for all the marbles, guys. Yeah. What What do you do? Do you put your children in one hand and, and a stack of money in the other? I mean, they can give me uh, $10 trillion right now, and I wouldn't trade my child. That's what it comes down to. You're trading your children for this, these monies rather than holding them accountable and asking them, uh, where's your title? Where's your title? Show me that at some point in time, go back to the original charters. Go back to Ursu. Show me that you ever had title. And it, this just wasn't a deal between Congress or Senate. Show me. Show me that, that you did not contract with each other to just raise me. And they couldn't and they do that, can't. could they? They can't. They couldn't do it. They can't. Yeah. This is you. This is your land. This, this is your body that you're allowing to be uh, tricked out by core process, by legal process. You are the legally processed product. And so you, you have know, to and with the, the vaccines and everything that they're doing with this autism, you know, did anybody ever stop to think that this might not be some error or mistake or just some fluke or just some financial gain that they didn't care about mercury or whatever, that perhaps this is just another part of the uh, genetic and social engineering? This may be the last, you know, generation that still has a capacity to snap out of the trance that we're being fed through, you know, the food system with the gen genetic modification and the chemical modification, the television, the media, all of this stuff, socially, you know, all of the different variances that push us left, right, and center, compel us to do things, to be things, you know, who knows how long before whatever resistance is left in us is, is silenced. Absolutely. And, and these contracts um, to kill you, you are the human test subject. You can find these contracts over at the Ethics Commission. Uh, I think it's Fici.com, F-E-C-I.com or .org or something. Um, the Ethics Commission is the one with the contracts with the FDA to use you as a human trust sub test subject. And what most don't understand is that when there's a recall, like the Tylenol recall, they had a Motrin recall, all of these little recalls that you see, they don't change the product. They just notify you. That's what clean hands doctrine is. They notify you, the sheep, will buy the media and tell you that Tylenol or Motrin is killing you. They don't change the product. They put it back on the shelves. And if you take it, that is your choice. You know that it's killing you. You have knowledge now. And that's clean hands doctrine. So when you die of kidney failure or whatever else it's going to do, your liver blows out on you and you need a, a liver transplant or whatever else, that's clean hands. You are choosing that at that time because they already notified you that these products kill you. These are the contracts between the Ethics Commission, FICI, which means to kill the fee, and the FDA. 
Okay, and when it, you say kill the fee, not everybody understands what the fee is. This goes back to um, the feudal law. law. Feudal law. Yeah. It's under feudal law. If you have somebody over you that allows you to be a human test subject, that means that somebody has authority over you to, to give you that title as a human test subject, and they're cashing in on it. That is feudal society. You are the fee, F-E-E. -E. And, and it stems from the Garden of Eden. When you go and uh, the tree of knowledge is the fig tree, fide, fiduciary, fiodiary, federal, confederation. League means confederation. The League of Nations is Congress. It's a confederated state by contractual agreement. Now, when they finally went into the League of Nations Covenant, 1924, they, they established themselves as a high contracting parties. Now, what people do not want to see is that that maintains us under admiralty law. You're the vessel. They're a vessel. You're a vessel. A birth certificate is a docking instrument on their vessel. So you have to pay to dock there. This is the nature of rent, Malthusian's theory. You have to pay to dock there. And then they went. They took it a step forward with the master lend lease agreement that, that agreed that, that you're going to pay rent. Now, that was around the time of the Atlantic Charter when the, the Congress got global governance, global governance. They are the new world order. You have to hold them accountable. You know, these judges are only representatives to Congress. These judges are only banks. That's what bench means in French. Bank. When you go into a court, you appear there as a special deposit. That's why we took it all the way out of their realm. I appeared before an executor as a special deposit, and we've taken it fully. We proved that we had title because my executor holds a lodial title to my estate, the land. This is what they're tricking out. The estate means anything that you have and anything that your heirs will have. Estate follows the heirs. We have to get the estates back out of their hands. They have stolen the body. Everything is based on debenture and perpetual servitude in this society. You have to get Congress out of there and stop purchasing from the law merchant. And what happened tonight, as everybody witnessed, was somebody came in and they were trying to sell law. That is the law merchant. If you buy that, you purchase from the law merchant. At that time, you are gravitating or giving your body over to the Lord God. That is who you're calling Lord God or Father. If you rely on somebody else, you're calling them Father. If you're patriotic to something else, you're calling it Father. Ecclesiastical law is founded on the basis that you are the Father, but you do have free will choice to gravitate to another Father. And the only rules are spoken in Jesus' walk. And he said, you know not the scriptures of God. Scripture is at the actual walk. Prescribe is before. Subscribe is from below. Inscribe is from within with psychology. Superscribe is from above. But scripture means your actual walk. You don't know the walk of God. The walk of so God scripture, is scripture your walk. Would go along. Scripture would go along with what you say about your actions um, your 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 words and actions. Absolutely. In action. Absolutely. And that's what you said. You know, you know, not the scriptures of God is one of my favorites. And the, and the second one is he says you, you're known for your works and action. And that's where title comes from. Your title is how you're acting. That's your walk. That's your scripture. If you walk as God, you're God. If you walk as a citizen, you're a citizen. In your authority, you are. Seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, I don't know why the connection's not right. I've got it plugged into a hard line tonight. So you're saying well, about your walk in Scripture? Yeah, your walk is your walk. You you write the book of life by living it, by being. You can't be in the past tense and you can't be sideways. You can't have somebody representing you or representing you in another way. You, so all of, their, all of what they do is compulsion to pull us left and right into court with charges things like that, um, distracting us, everything to keep our attention off going forward and being. Absolutely. But, but that's, the, that's the thing that, that we need to cover here because ecclesiastical law is only based on free will. Free will. You can choose that other father. If he dangles something at you like a shiny thing or whatever, you can choose that other father. 
Now, what we what we evidenced in our case is that the judge here, you know, let's take the presumption that he's dangling something. So I go into his court and I, I don't ask him to do anything, but he's still got that thing dangling. Well, I denied him. And I said, no, I'm dissenting. You're not my father. Well, after that, all hell broke loose. You know, he comes out and he shuts off the gas. And then after that, he, he tore out the gas meter. He made sure that he ordered Nipsco to turn out, uh, tear out the gas meter. Well, then eventually, you know, when we called him on his, on his title, that's when he facilitated the eviction unlawfully. Now, he didn't have any right or, or any authority to, to facilitate an eviction because the bank had stopped acting in December. So what he did was he came in sua sponte to evict me. For what purpose? He just pulled that out of his butt. They don't like it when you don't um, follow the script. Absolutely, but that does not allow free will. He was trying to. Yeah, it doesn't allow contract. free will, and that's what that judge kept trying to say. It's all free will that that people were willingly signing these things, like we were. You know, we know everything that's being disclosed. You know, we're we're bombarded with all these wants and needs, and all of these interest rates, and you know, no interest rates, and. <laughs> All of this uh, con artist stuff and the marketing, and so people go do that and, you know, do that on the basis that they think that they're going to have a job and em employment to be able to pay this uh, mortgage. So, I mean, everything is so convoluted and so twisted, and then they tell you, hey, well, you did it, dumbass. And, and absolutely fault. not. Absolutely not. They apply every force that you know. When when there's an accident in your bank account and you go to, you get overdrawn, that's usually where it starts. They're right. starting the ball ball rolling. So you, so you get a, a letter two months later in the mail from the bank and it says we're sorry we made a mistake, but up till this point you've been you've been running into the overdraft fees and uh, insufficient charges and everything else. Well then um, the the electric company does the same thing accidentally shuts you off. Oh no we can't turn you on until you give us a deposit. These are yep. not accidents. Right. This is how they're forcing you into a bankrupt state, forcing you into foreclosure, forcing you into child protection, forcing you into the courts so that they can offer you these laws. But they're the ones that are implicating the force behind it. That is they not trigger real. it. Absolutely. Each and every time. And, and, you know, you're sitting here under corporate governance since 1929 when they went into first started going into bankruptcy. Under corporate governance, and a lot of people don't realize this because they're patriotic to their employment and they, they're still blaming themselves, but you work for those corporations. You work for your government. And when they want to take you out and they need you on your knees, your, your department's going to be closed down. You're going to be laid off or you're going to be fired. And what this does is it allows you to blame yourself so that you strive harder to be a good girl or a good boy. You get a job elsewhere, but you're still maintaining the same corporate welfare you were before. Now they've just made you so that you think that you're the bad guy. Yeah, or they take away other employment so you can't get employed, and then they start turning on you um, with the consensus reality that there's something wrong with you. Absolutely. Um, and, and even, then, like, you know, if you go into court to say that you can't pay your child support because there's no employment, they, they make you the bum. Absolutely. Like there should be some miraculous uh, position waiting for you where, you know, if you're over 45, you're able to get in the door to even interview. It's impossible. It doesn't work anymore. It is, and, that, and that's according to their policy. If you look in fiscal policy, after you're 50, your production legs, so they have to get it from you another way, which is why you're attacked by the medical industry, psychological industry, or criminal industry. It would be interesting to see the numbers of how many were actually ousted from their lifelong careers after 45 or 50 in this 2008-2009 wipeout exodus, um, then went into foreclosure with the fraudulent foreclosure and also took a hit on their 401ks and retirements and then had to use that to fight for the house to, that they didn't get to keep. To pay the legal fees. The and then how sick they off. became because of it and how many are still living or living with cancer or whatever the case may be, just on the destitute edge. Right. And that's the whole system. It's designed to pro to the profit of the attorneys. So as you're going into bankruptcy and you're pulling out your 401k, and, and we've seen them hiccup. I mean, recently we, we had one where um, the IRS was coming after one of us, and, and uh, we stopped the IRS through equitable estoppel. Well, then their own, their own uh, trustee of their own retirement came in and asked the judge, well, what do I do with this, this retirement now? 
you know, they came in as an interpleader because we, we got the IRS out of there. They wanted to attach that account. Well, her corporate employment came in to attach the account for IRS, even after the IRS was removed. No matter what, they want to the come in and they off. want to break in. And it's yeah, all the ponies. It is all. The mask comes off, and you get to see it a little clearer when that happens. But for Absolutely. the most part, they've got all these things that make you think that everything is individually and separate, and just some random, you know. I mean, how many, how many actually believe, like I did, that this uh, everything was built on incompetence? That they were just really incompetent people working for these corporations? That no matter which way you turn around, you were going to get hosed because. They were just completely boobs, but it's not a, this is by plan. Absolutely. Everything, it's a, it's an ingenious structure, and this structure has yeah. been maintained over and over and over again throughout history. So I thought uh, George W. Bush was a, a, a complete boob and a numbskull. But he wasn't. He was a great mouthpiece, wasn't he? And behind the scenes, what were they doing? I mean, yep. you get an idiot up there that, that looks nice, but he's stupid as hell. Well, he's not an idiot. He's a pedophile. Making faux pas all the time and, you know, jumbling up words. He was like a laughing stock, but nobody took it seriously until the shit hit the fan. Halliburton and Enron and, and uh, uh, genocide and human trafficking. I mean, nobody ever notices that because this, this presentation is in front of you and you've got this structure that, that appears like it's legitimate. It's all founded on color. The illusion or rise of something. You hear you read about his daughters going to Paraguay to go buy huge, vast amounts of land and water to, you know, all behind the scenes. Absolutely, they don't. They don't want this known. Um, they, they, you know, I was I was surprised to see that on on that uh, Judge Naidu's um, CV. You know, it stipulates that he's the king of Borneo. Well. All of the Congress members, they all live in Puerto Rico and, and in the Bahamas. They don't live in the United States. Uh, they, they, they like their ability to have a possession of the United States Incorporated, like Puerto Rico, and still not be adhering to actual United States code. So everybody here, you know, it's illegal to, to use slaves and, and human trafficking, but not where they're staying at. They can use them that, all the where um the IRS is based in Puerto Rico as well. That's what it says. Absolutely. And, and they talk about the Secretary of the Treasury. They're not talking about the Treasury here. They're talking about the Treasury of Puerto Rico. Right. And and that's how they're, they're, they're money laundering. Yep. Through the United States Incorporated, Congress has been la money laundering. And, you know, and most people, they think that they owe taxes still. And, uh, and a lot of people get mad at me and tell me I'm anti-government or whatever. The Internal Revenue Service, people. Revenue can only be generated. Revenue can only be generated or created. Created by productivity, production value. Taxes would be collected. So you would have like a internal collection service or or something like that that is not what that is it's an internal revenue service internal to the original 13 colonies which is congress you're generating revenue into congress you're not and so here here we see here we see people screaming out for the congress to investigate the irs <laughs> yes it's a, it's a joke what you need to do is hold congress accountable for this they, they are human trafficking this is human trafficking this is kidnapping. This is servitude. This is slavery. Um, the majority of, of Congress members and all these attorneys are pedophiles. Um, Joseph Biden, he, he implemented the Violence Against Women Act to prey on females. Oh, Patrick but that Leahy, sounds so good. Patrick Leahy, he, he brought in the Crimes Against Children Act. That's a privacy law to protect him. He's a pedophile. Now, are you going to go looking for child porn? Hell no. You don't, you don't like that thing. But they like child porn. The Crimes Against Chi Children Act prevent you from finding child porn and turning it in. Because the minute you come across child porn, who do you run to? Federal Bureau of Investigation. That is Congress's law enforcement. It really stops their revenue flow. Yes, but you see how, how easy it is to falsely accuse any mm. one of the citizens or human beings out there. We, we, we have an 80 percent rate of false allegations against men right now because of this FBI, local law enforcement detectives. All of these people are, are protecting the real pedophiles by putting males into the shoot. They're criminalizing all of our citizen males, all of our human males in order to protect real live pedophiles.
And that and leaves the females and the children open. Absolutely. And allows us to be preyed on. We have to get back to reality. You have to find your authority. You have to stand on it. They never had any allodial right. They don't have any right to be involved in your estate. Probate court is illegal on its face. That is abatement of a freehold every time. Interpleading is unlawful on its face. That is abatement of a freehold. Controversy. You are trover. You are being found. You are being found. You're the trover. Like treasure trove. Like treasure trove. Controversy. Anytime you enter into court on a controversy, you are with Trover. The action of being with Trover. You are the thing they are they are finding, the treasure trove. They just cashed in on your estate by you entering into that court instead of indicting it. We have to stop doing this. They are human trafficking. You know, I, want, I thought he was saying something about the... Um, when he said, I go back to the very beginning, and he was naming off all these things. Didn't he say the coronation charter? No, I did. I brought up the coronation charter when he was trying to uh, blow over something. I can't even remember. I'll have to listen to it again. But, um, I mean, it's just sick. This is what Congress has done. They perverted everything. You know, originally there didn't have to be these courts because we don't behave in those manners. We don't hurt each other, first of all. Human human beings don't have it in them to, to harm anybody. And so by the implication of force, control, and action of law, They've allowed us to consent to all this. And, they and constriction. I mean, they obviously put you in uh, serious straits so that your survival needs aren't met, which causes people to have to, you know, go to various whatever means. And a lot of times that would be, I mean, the illegal, the um, unlawful stealing or, I mean, they create the, psych the psychopathy in this society. Absolutely. If we remove and that people would be people everybody who has the same basic needs love shelter you know who wants to fight not naturally no and and uh, they've implicated all wars congress has had global governance since the atlantic charter they've impl implicated all wars uh yep. columbia pol pot was congress uh, Nazi Germany was Congress. It was the United States Incorporated as they were incorporated back then. It's the same thing over and over and over and over again. This has nothing to do with racism. They've told us that we're racist. They've told us that we're, we're against each other and we're religious fanatics against each other so that we, we allow this. We actually pay for this shit. And we, we have to stop doing this. We have to come together as one. This is ridiculous. There's no other option now. You are at the end stage. We're at the end stage now be between where Hitler was and Nazi Germany, between Bolshevik Russia and when the, the war started. And see, a, lot of, a lot of people won't see that because the TV shows different things and we think that that's reality. Like, you know, as if, as if, as if every show is uh, somewhat a section of the world and we see everybody's happy, well-dressed, well-fed you know, doing ridiculous things, so how could there be anything that serious going on? Right, how can this happen in my country? That's called cognitive dissonance. And part of that, you know, as you're watching television, you're they're measuring you along with the community. They're creating a community, this television show, that television show, and you become a part of that mentally. And so when you turn off the television, that's why you feel alone. All of a sudden, you're alone. You're not surrounded by your community anymore. And this is part of social en engineering. And that's this why people leave the TV on in the background or, you know, something. They can't be in silence for very right. long because it's uncomfortable. Right. Right. And, and it's so sad. We need to just get back to being in reality. Look around you. Why is this happening? What just happened? You know, you just witness these things. You need to come back to relativity, actually believing yourself, knowing that this is happening and standing up. I mean, you know, the other part, too, that they do is um, the divide and conquer thing where, oh, you know, the conservatives think that all liberals, anybody who thinks it's opposite, must be sponges, socialists or whatever, and that anybody who, you know, isn't one of them productive and then they are just you know, leeches on society. These are these are thoughts that are put into your head through the media. Absolutely. And it, for example, um, well, what's his name with the funny hair? Donald Trump. Uh, 
every so often uh, he goes bankrupt uh, on one of his corporations because it's not producing the way that he wants it to. And so he'll file for bankruptcy. He goes on bankruptcy, lays that on the federal state, and you take that up. That's now your burden. And then everybody cheers him, and he goes through, you know, three wives, has children and very congenial relationships with all of them. You know, if he, if he hadn't gone through the marriage uh, divorce thing, what would make him any different from, you know, a harem owner? <laughs> well, and it, and it goes well beyond that. When he files for bankruptcy, you're looking at millions of dollars um, in, in debt that he lays upon your back. That is what corporate welfare is. You are keeping him on welfare while the media is telling you that immigrants are, are collecting $500 a month or a single mom is collecting $700 a month in, in cash yep. benefits or food stamps or, or medical. Well, and the illegal alien, of course, you know, right. make them the ones. Right. Okay. They're, they might be collecting $500 a month. Uh, Trump just went bankrupt for millions and millions and millions of dollars and just laid that on you. That's corporate welfare. And what they're doing is they're displacing that in the thought. You never see this crap. You know, Walmart, Sam, Sears, uh, Woolworths, all of these places that go bankrupt, they lay that on you. They are the United States Incorporated. You need to be aware of what's going on. Aurora Medicine, there, there's a lot of... Corporations that file for bankruptcy for shits and giggles because when you're not producing, they just offset this debt, lay it back on you so that you have to produce. Then they come after you in taxes or they come after you in the medical industry, criminal industry, psychological industry. This is how you're maintaining corporate welfare. We have to stop blaming the, the each other. The credit card debt stuff. Absolutely. You know, just, I mean, they, they write that off within, what, 90 days, and then they're still trying to hammer you and hammer you and hammer you and selling it to hammer you further. And all they need is for you to engage. And then the next thing you know, you've got a default judgment. And, you know, just to tie you up, then that thing is sitting over your head on the county. Uh, you know, even if it's not real, it's just a notice. But it's there. Your employer falls in line to garnish you. I mean, come on, it's... Your corporate employer falls in line to garnish you for corporate debt through a congressional act so that you can pay for it. This is called corporate welfare. That's the first and second welfare theorem. Uh, they consider in that document, uh, those documents, children to be pollution. Um, the, the foundation of, of all of this schematic is human trafficking and slavery Bouvier's maxim, uh, offspring shall follow the condition of the mother, as is the case in slaves and animals. Free men follow the condition of the father, and that means you need to stand up. The father has to appear somewhere. you got to get your, your head out of your nether regions, and we need to stand up and realize your authority because your children and the females related to the children, any female, your sister, your mom, your aunt, your mom, your grandma is playing into the system. Now, we just went through this with a family member uh, recently where she was, uh, she went in for a uh, quote yearly uh, lung x ray. And her doctor came back at her because she's in her late uh, 60s now, early 70s. Uh, her doctor came back and said they found a spot on her kidney based on the uh, lung x ray. And he told her what the symptoms of cancer were. And at this time, she's so fully indoctrinated by the media influence that she runs right out and she starts feeling these things. And within not even two weeks, she was on chemotherapy to treat there this cancer that never existed. Now they're mm. extrapolating from her insurance. They're extrapolating her by cash because now we're into another year with the, the uh, Medicare social uh, security shit. And so she's got to meet a spend down limit. She doesn't have cancer. She has to meet a, a $4,500 spending limit right now. And how much are they cashing in on? Yeah. Yeah. It's and they're using that, uh, perpetuating when you consider the treatment, what, 200,000 or more. It's the only, I mean, you're actually paying for the gas chamber, really, when you think about it. Nice Absolutely. white walls and happy, you know, nurses and uh, sanitized gassing, but. Absolutely. They have a very low rate of success unless you're counting it financially. Uh, everybody, we'll see you back here next week on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, leaving the farm of Pat and Tammy. You've been listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. 
leaving the farm with Bull and Rocco. And I'm sorry we didn't have more time with Bull and Rocco tonight, but we'll try to get them on next week. And, of course, they'll be on Wednesday, uh, 10 to 12 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Judge Nadu for your appearance. We appreciate that. Absolutely.